Hey, it's Lucy. It has been two years since I've updated my CV and that is because it has been two years since I was coming to the end of my PhD and applied to the job that I've still got and still love. Since I wrote it my career has now changed direction so radically that I'll have to completely overhaul it. And that means I might as well share that two-year-old version with you. So this is the CV that got me the job I'm in right now. It's a scientific position and it was tailor-written for that position and the job is at a national laboratory. What I'll do in this video is go through this CV step by step so you can use it as an example of what a post-PhD or post-scientific qualification CV might look like when you're applying for a research job. I'm not saying it's perfect, Two years on, there is a lot of stuff I would change. I will point that out as we go along. And I'm not saying you should use this as a postdoc or academic CV because academia CVs tend to just go on for as long as is needed. And I'm not even saying this is what got me the job because that's application forms. That's how I came across an interview. That is luck, that is fit in the company. But if you've got a good CV that's succinct and clear and summarizes the best of you, then that's a great place to start. So let's get to it. Practicalities first. Two pages for a CV is standard. A lot of places will outright ask for this, but I've never heard it said otherwise that you can't tack on a third page that just lists abstracts and papers because after your time in academia, you'll have accumulated these and they take up far too much space otherwise. Having a two page limit does not mean you can keep just going smaller and smaller in font. You know how small is too small, don't go mad. I think I'm a 10 maybe at my smallest. The font I've used here is called CMU Serif. I like it because it looks like a science font, I don't know why, but for me it was a close call between this and the more elegant Garamond. Baskerville, Bodoni is really nice. I've combined two fonts in the past and used one for headings and one for the main text, which can be really effective, but I would say no more than two and stick to whatever theme you choose in terms of heading sizes, section spaces, and use of lines like I have here. On to the contents. Name at the top, big letters, you are the title, you are the main event. It's standard to have email, phone, and current work address at the top here before diving into the main event. And given you've just left education, this is where to head next. Most recent qualifications come first and you can adjust the detail depending on the job you're applying for and what's relevant. So for me, I wanted to have a section that outlined my thesis because I've been working on this thing for four years, but also because I was applying for a job outside of my speciality and so people might have read the thesis title and gone, well, so what? I mentioned my undergraduate masters after this, but don't go into too much detail because it's less relevant for this job. But I do list my final mark, so that's competence. I list things that'll make me stand out like my final project, and I also list a handful of relevant specialisms. With this level of detail, it's about tailoring what you've already got that's relevant while still being genuine and telling the truth. As for earlier than this, A-levels, GCSEs, as proud as I am of my AS distinction in digital illustration, it's probably not relevant here. No, I was applying for what I like to call a job in the real world, which means I want to demonstrate that I've had actual roles and responsibilities beyond just schooling. My PhD counts. That's all about time management and self-reliance and resilience, etc. But what about jobs where you develop leadership or demonstrated teamwork? Or what about jobs where you learned other skills? I kept this section scientific and left out my paper rounds and my bartending and waitressing jobs. I, I think I change this now actually because you know that right there that is hard work that is punctuality that's reliability from a very young age and I'm really proud of all of that work. I keep it brief I am not going to write mounds of text here just the key points what I did why it was interesting what I learned and you should tailor this section depending on which job you're applying for and try and pick out the points you think that job will find most interesting. I'm not going to go into the geology of the asteroid series in this one when I'm applying for a nuclear laboratory position but if I'm applying for the European Space Agency, then suddenly that detail becomes far more important. Now we get onto the sections that I would aim to radically change depending on the job you're applying for. This position stressed the importance of laboratory skills, so I had a section on that. Stressed analytical skills, so I had a section on that. And it mentioned communication, reports, presentations, so I had a section on that. And then I had a quick miscellany bit for other stuff I was proud of. Read the job description and pick out the key skills they're interested in and then treat your CV like you're answering a question in an exam. The answer being why you're perfect for the role. For these sections, I would say don't make it too formulaic, switch up the formatting where you can. My advice to myself at this point was just keep it to an absolute minimum. You want to give your reader just enough to entice them and then they can ask away and away about all of this stuff at interview and that's your time to elaborate. Next section, awards. I've heard arguments for putting awards and grants much sooner, but I kind of take the Richard Feynman view on awards, which is who awarded it? 
what does their opinion matter? So I wanted these after my objective skills as a way of saying this is what I've done and this is what people think about that. And finally, as a touch of something personal, I like a section at the bottom that briefly mentions hobbies. I know a lot of people don't bother with this, but when I read openings for positions in my company now, it's the hobbies that cement people as real people in my head that makes them memorable. Like, oh yeah, the chemist from Lancaster who collects coins. Keep it short, space is at a premium, but I would say definitely go for it. Also, sometimes your hobbies are important. Like, you're applying for a job in the middle of nowhere and your hobbies are hiking. That suggests you're not going to go mad and quit within a few months. And Overleaf, we've got that paper and conference section that I mentioned earlier. That's it. That's the CV that I wrote and submitted for my first ever post-PhD job. Though it's not perfect, it's got those flaws I mentioned, that CV helped me get there. Hopefully this example will help you get to where you want to go to. I will stress again, it's not meant to be a perfect example, it's just an example, and this helped me alongside timing and luck, who else applied, and there's as many ways to write a CV as there are people. So please, take from this what you find helpful, leave what you don't, make the ideas here your own, and make them work for you. Thanks for watching! I have an older video on how to write a CV from when I just finished applying for my PhDs, if you're interested in seeing how it has evolved since then. I have a video about the next stage of the job applying stuff, which is the interview, and I have a whole playlist of post-PhD careers-y things if you're interested. I'll put the links in the box thing below. My name is Lucy Kizik, I am a scientist in the nuclear industry, and I'm a science fiction author, and take care.